What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. Tony's back again. Hello. I, I love having you back on the channel, man. And today you have something really spicy and really cool for us. Something that we haven't had on the channel since the last time you did it, funny enough. Yeah. Duelist Nexus had a lot of stuff. A lot of it not exactly very exciting, but it did have a lot of cool Nexus support. One of them was for a deck that came out of a deck book hack called Arsartex. And our strategies are actually really interesting. They were one of the three decks that came on the least popular, uh, I guess, deck build pack, the Ancient Guardians one, which had three archetypes that did absolutely nothing. But they were all really cool aesthetics. So the new support does actually make them a lot better. All right, so let's, so, get, into uh, let's get right into it. Okay. So starting off, we have, uh, the, just to, for preference, all your Sardics are split up into two groups, either Sardic Majors or Sardic Minors. The Minors, when summoned, all have effects that are built for consistency. They're meant to be summoned on your turn. The Majors, however, can be summoned on your opponent's turn and have effects if you control another Sardic, i.e. the Minors you summon in the prior turn and are built for disruption. So for the Minors, we were playing three Ursartic, uh Mick Polar, uh, one Ursartic Mick uh, Billis, and one Mick, Ursartic Mick Taints. All of them do some kind of consistency effect on summon. This one will search for any Ursartic monster. This will special summon another Ursartic monster from your hand, and this one will add one back. Now, how do you summon them? We'll get to it when I cover the rest of them. Okay. Because this is where they, at least the gimmick works. Okay. Uh, for our majors, we're playing three Ursartic uh, Megatanus, three Ursartic Megabilis, and one Ursartic Megapolar. When this is summoned and you control an Ursartic uh, monster, you book a card, which is actually really relevant in this format because there's a lot of things that would rather be set than in the graveyard or in your hand. Uh, this one banishes one from the graveyard. And this one will pop a spell and trap. This is probably the least useful, but honestly, I'm tempted to swap this one out for another Mega Polar, just because spell and trap move was getting a lot more important. Now, how do you get all these level sevens on the field? Well, while they're in the hand during either player's main phase, you contribute a level seven or higher monster to special themselves to the field. That means that inherently, as long as you have other level sevens or each other in hand, they are essentially quick summons on either player's turn. And it lets you do a lot of cool things like summon this on turn zero to get a search, uh, summon this potentially to like book monster on your opponent's turn. And that lets you build a board sometimes not only on your turn, but more likely on your opponent's turn as you're disrupting them. And the goal of this deck, however, is to actually make synchros. Why? Because your level eights are tuners and your level sevens are non-tuners. And that may seem a little weird, but when we get to the extra deck, it will make a lot of sense. A lot of these, as you may probably guess though, are kind of expensive, which is why when they made new Lexi support for it in Duelist Nexus, they made a new one called Ursartic, I think, Bright Knights, Ursartic Alpha. It is supposed to be a mix between it and Drytrons. Uh, while you control an Ursartic or a Drytron monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And in doing so, you search for any Ursartic spell or trap. You can also search for a Drytron spell or trap, but it's mostly Ursartic here. And the main general point of this card is it lets you get you into your spell and traps. It's a monster that doesn't need to tribute another monster to summon itself, so it's a free body on field, and it searches you into your spell and trap support, which a lot of them are actually incredibly broken. And because it's technically, oh, I should probably clarify, it treats itself as an Ursartic monster, yep. so it can be searched off of your uh, Mega Mick Polar. And that way, it's you can go make polar into this and then get the spell and trap instead. From there, we're then playing a few random additional cards. We have two cash tier Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir has a few benefits in this deck. Obviously, like a lot of other decks for control, it's just a card you could drop that actually replaces itself and banishes cards. However, because it's a level seven that searches another level seven, it's a great starter that puts a level seven on field, then then grabs a card that can be used as fodder for your uh, or Yeah. And then we also have one Eldritch the Golden Lord. Uh, this one's also a little weird one. It's level seven or higher monster, so again, it can be attributed from the uh, for the effects of your Sartix. But while it's in the graveyard, you can launch your spell and traps to add it back to your hand and special summon it, or more than likely just keep it in your hand to be sacrificed again. It's consistent fodder that you can use, especially since a lot of your spell and traps, while powerful, don't actually kind of help you summon your Sartix sometimes, so you let you swap them out for actual advantage to start your place. And there's actually a few cards that you need to get rid of off of your own field that you can turn off with your Outlet to go to more. Okay. Uh, for hand traps, we have two uh, Ash, two Valor, and two Nibiru. Uh, you can play Droll, but shockingly, you actually do do a lot of searching on your opponent's turn. So if you draw your opponent, you're actually losing out as well. Okay. So these are just the general good package. Nibiru is actually kind of cool just because, once again, it's a level seven or higher, which means in the off chance that it is you're playing a dead matchup, it's fodder for your Sartix. Moving on to the spells, which are probably the more important aspect. Like we start off with the field spell and two Ursartic Big Dipper. Big Dipper is a very powerful field spell. While it's on the field, uh, if you would tribute a monster to activate an Ursartic effect, you can instead banish a level seven or higher Ursartic from your graveyard instead. This functionally replaces the cost of all your Ursartics at least one time once per turn for one you've already used. And that saves you resources really well. Functionally as well, 
if you was to special summon a mon uh, if a monster would be special summoned in general, you could put a counter on this card. Any number of counters. But if a monster would be special summoned while you control in our Sarkic Synchro, you can remove a minimum of seven counters from this card to take any monster your opponent controls permanently. Okay, so it's it a snatch, snatch deal. deal. Yeah. Uh, and since you're in a format where you can your special summoning monsters on your opponent's turn, your opponent will be special summoned monsters. It's very easy to accrue the seven counters to then be always, to always have a live snatch deal whenever you want. Okay. And all these effects are soft ones per turn, uh, which means in theory uh, you can also replace a field spell with another field spell to refresh the the substitution effect or alternatively you can use the effect to take a monster and then activate a new field spell and then try to accrue seven counters and take another monster this effect triggers whenever any monster special summon. so you could also use it uh using the quick effect of your tactics effects to trigger the uh snatch shield effect at any time you want as well so that's really cool uh the only reason why we're only playing two is because you actually have a way to get it directly from the deck that you don't need to play a lot of searches for it. okay then we have two ursartic uh radiation uh this is a card they made i think back all the way in uh bach i think yeah, Buck. This is, it was essentially one of their Hail Marys for making an archetype at least playable. And God is a powerful. When you activate it, you put seven counters on this card. Whenever an Arsartic monster will be special summoned from the hand or extra deck, remove a counter, draw a card. This is not once per turn. Oh my God, you can, what? So if you were to perform a chain of special summons, it's very likely you can draw all seven cards. That's crazy. Granted, once you burn all seven, this doesn't draw anymore and you need to find a way to get rid of it but that's where the other lich comes in yeah. because the other lich can launch this from the grave uh from the field to the grave to add itself back and that lets you play a new one because these are locked to one copy on the field per uh per oh, okay. so if you play one and you have a way to get rid of it you can't play a new one okay. however even while it's on the field with no counters it does have the additional effect where on your end phase you can take any of your Arsartic cards and sh in your graveyard and shuffle them back in your deck and that lets you reuse some of the spells you've already used like activating a field spell more than once or some of the uh one of Arsartics in your Deck so that you always have access to it. Okay. So really fantastic card there. Next up we have three Ursartic uh, Departure. Uh, this is Machine of Deployment. You activate, discard a card, search for two Ursartics from your deck to your hand. It also has the additional effect where, except for the turn sent to the Graver, it can substitute the cost for any of your Ursartic Tribute effects. So it's another way to substitute for the effects. And that lets you, on your turn, search for two cards, and on your opponent's turn, get an additional Ursartic if you need to. Uh, and the substitute effect I'm going to point out right now has a huge relevance for one of your extra deck monsters. And this is why you're going to wear actually playing a fair number of cards that do this substitution. We then have the one or Sartic Slider. This is just a quick play monster reborn, which can be relevant because you guess what? If you summon these back in any way and they're, you control another Sartic, they do trigger their effects. So even if you activate this on your opponent's turn, you can use this for disruption. Nice. Then we have unconventionally one or Sartic Drytron and one Drytron Fapnir. So this is where at some point they decided to take the Ursartics into this direction that links it with the Drytron. The general idea is that all these Ursartics are based off of the Big Dipper. The Drytrons are based off of the Alpha Centauri constellation. They intersect and therefore the archetypes intersect as well. Yeah. Does that make it good? Not quite. So Ursartic Drytron here is a fusion spell. You can activate it by banishing an Ursartic uh, Big Dipper and a Drytron Fafni from your hand or field. You can summon a fusion monster, the ultimate flagship Ursatron. We'll get into that a little later. Okay. But uh, this, is the only field, this is the only fusion spell that fuses two field spells. However, fortunately, if you were to control an Asartic Polari, which is one of your synchro monsters, you can use one of the materials from the deck instead. Oh, okay, nice. So it's, it makes it a little easier to summon this card. Uh, however, the more important part about this, in my personal opinion, is the graveyard effect. It's another substitute. Okay. In the graveyard, it can be banished immediately, not just the turn it's on the turn it's sent to the graveyard as well, to substitute for effect. And that is just relevant if you're just going to dump it. However, sometimes you can make the fusion, which is why you're playing the Fafnir. And it's kind of fortunate that the Fafnir can also search this because it's also a dry con spell and trap from there we then have three foolish bale of goods this is used to dump some of your sardic spell and traps that can be used for substitutes but it's also used to dump a specific trap that we're playing as well and one called by the grave because you sometimes can fall to some cantrips and lastly for the traps we're playing one ice barrier now ice barrier on activation targets a monster that as it battles one of your water monsters changes attack to zero it's just kind of a uh, battle trap However, in the graveyard, you can banish it from your graveyard, send any level 5 or high water monster from your deck to the grave, which is Everything. all your Asartics, and then add back any water monster from your graveyard. This functionally, it's a Rota, which makes your Foolish Bale of Goods, by dumping this, also a Rota, and okay. this lets you search one. And there's actually a number of ways, even if you draw into this, to get this in the grave. For example, you can send it with an Eldritch if you open it. You can also send it for the discard effect of your uh, Departure, which you can search off of your Bright Knights as well. So there's actually a number of ways, even if you brick with this card, to get into the grave to use it that time. Okay. All right, so this is 40 cards in the main deck? This is 40 cards in the main deck. Okay, perfect. Uh, you can actually play more. The deck kind of benefits from the fact that it has more bloated options. 
because sometimes it can just kind of brick. But you also don't want to play a lot of non Ursartic options just because everything kind of inherently Xeno locks itself, yeah. being requiring that you banish Ursartics from the game. All right. Anyway, going into the extra deck, we start off with three Ursartic Polari. This is a level one Synchro Monster. So you're probably wondering, how do you make a level one Synchro Monster? Well, Ursartic Polari can be summoned by sending Ursartics from your field to the grave. Actually, not Ursartics, any monsters from the field of grave, a tuner and a non-tuner, whose difference in levels is one. As in, if I take a level seven non-tuner Ursartic minor and a level eight Ursartic major, with a difference of level one, I could summon Polari to my fields. This is a Dark Synchro. This is the closest thing we'll get to Dark Synchro in real life. Yeah. Uh, when summoned, it directly activates Big Dipper, the field hole, directly from your deck. Fantastic, it's a great thing. Also, while it's on the field, you contribute a level seven or higher monster from your hand or field to special summon an Arsartic from your graveyard, or add it back to your hand. Okay. Uh, this is a cool way to bring back a level eight, which allows you to make your bigger plays. But realistically, the main point of this card is to grab you that field spell. The field spell does so much for the decks, reducing the cost of the Arsartics because they are costly. And as a result, this is the first thing you'll be making to get that field spell live if you don't have access to it. Okay. Moving on, we go on to their actual boss monsters in two Ursartic Septetra and one Ertartric Grand Chariot. These monsters, like Polari, can be made using the difference in levels. In this case, the difference in levels between a level one and a level eight to make the difference a seven. Uh, and they're very powerful on their own right. Uh, Septetra wall on the field negates the effects of all monsters without a level that come from the extra deck. So every Xyz monster, every Link monster, just say goodbye to their effects. Likewise, if you want to special summon a monster, you can search for any Ursartic card from your deck to your hand. This combines with things like your field spell and such, means that on your opponent's turn, as your opponent attempts to make plays, you'll be generating an advantage to directly respond to their plays. Really powerful. A uh, Grand Chariot on the other hand, when summoned, targets up to two cards on the field, blows them up. You can use this turn on your opponent's, uh, on your turn to like blow up your opponent's cards. You can also use it to blow up the radiation so you can clear it out. That's yep. another way you've done for. Likewise, uh, when your opponent would target an Ursartic card on the field, you could tribute a monster to negate the activation of that effect. Uh, just protection overall. But the main one will definitely be your Septetron. You get Septetron on the field, you're locking out your opponent at least half of their extra. Nice. Now, what we got in the Dune, uh, in I guess Dune Nexus, however, is the new card, Ursartic Polar Star. Polar Star is once again a level one synchro monster that can be made the same way as you made Polari, using the two monsters of the difference of levels of one. While it's on the field, it has but one. It has a singular effect. By tributing itself and a level eight in your hand, you can summon a level seven Ursartic synchro from your X deck, and it gains the additional effect where it then prevents the activation of all of, or it prevents your opponent from activating the effects of all monsters that come from the X deck with a level. Yep. Oh, so it'll give you the both negations. Yeah, so if you summon a Septetron, it has essentially saying, it essentially says, all monsters from the extra do not have their effects. Nice. And that's really powerful. Now, one thing I want to point out about this, however, is that this effect is not a hard once per turn. Which shouldn't be relevant because you're tributing it from your field anyway, right? However, that becomes a little more pertinent when you realize that if you were to substitute it with any of these substitute effects, what actually ends up happening is that you don't even tribute this card at all. Which means it stays on the field to be activated again. And there's a lot of configurations to your boat where you're going to be triggering this effect two to three times to summon three synchros, all of them live. That's crazy. This guy's nuts. Yeah. And all you need is that level 10 in hand and a substitute in grave. Yep. So, yep. And then that makes up our starting synchros. From there, we have a lot of uh, water lock cards. The uh, ice barrier that I mentioned earlier does Xeno lock you into waters, so you're generally playing waters. But there's actually yep. a fair amount of decent ones, like Adamant's Red Drag Eye for Negates. The one uh, Crocosaur for disruption and additional draws. The one Chang Ying as a level 10 for just, uh, which triggers shocking enough, if you were to banish your Sartex for uh, Big Dipper, triggers the effect of this to banish your opponent's cards. And it gets really big. Yes. Uh, then we have for Lynx, we have the one area for, uh, I guess just general water making. Yeah. We have the one uh, BLS, which if you make uh, conveniently on a turn where you're not locked by your Sartex, uh, just gets protection. Uh, now, I just probably want to mention this is something I briefly forgot. All your Astartics, when they're summoned, prevent you from summoning monsters without a level. Yeah. So you can't really make links that much, but you generally make them for following turns. Okay. And then lastly, we have, of course, the card I mentioned, the ultimate flagship Ursatron. Uh, this card's kind of cool. If a effect monster will be special summoned to your side of the field, you can search for an Ursartic or Jarchon from your deck to your hand. 
Just searching. And on your end phase, you could add back a Banish or, uh, or Sartic or Drytron card to your hand. It's just pure advantage that you can make sometimes that like combined with your own plays means that on your opponent's turn, you're gonna be able to search once and on your turn, you'll be able to search once. It's just constant streams and advantage that you're used to outgrind your opponent. Nice. Yeah. And so, uh, I'm gonna get a comment, Tony, just tell them there's only 14. There's only 14 in here. Uh, you could play probably an additional Grand Charity if you really wanted to, but this is all generally you would need for the extra deck. All right, guys, 14 is Tony's gimmick. So don't come here and be like, why is he only playing for it? It's a gimmick, all right? Yeah. Now, uh, Tony, you wanna continue? Yeah. Yeah, no, but I think that's the general deck. I think the deck still is, uh, it's solid. I see, it's actually done pretty well, even against metas I did not think would do well against, but it's still kind of fragile. It loses to Droll, definitely, and it loses to, I guess, if there's a, a sufficient amount of disruption to your plays, you're still losing advantage faster than your opponent is initially. Yeah. And while there's cards like Septetra on the recover it, you need to get those active first before you can actually start winning the game. Uh, I could show you a combo, but I really don't think there's exactly a like a, a very clean combo to show you. I could use like a really quick, simple one if you want. Sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. All right. So generally, if you open, let's say, I think realistically all you need to open is probably Mick Polar and any two level eights for this okay. kind of board. So it doesn't matter what the names are. Yeah. So the idea behind this, you can go tribute this, special this. You're going to activate the effect of this to search for your Bright Star. The special on the Bright Star, search for any spell. Uh, if you're missing more level eights, you could probably, uh, in this case, generally, if you have more level eights special on this, you'll grab the Septetron. But in the worst case scenario, we'll grab Departure here. Uh, we're going to activate Departure, sending the level eight from our hand to the grave, or any other card from the hand of the grave. Search for two more. Of which will tribute one to special. From there, Synchro these two away and make our Polari. Uh, for which Polari can then allow us to add or activate Big Dipper. Yep. Big Dipper can then allow us to banish any of these from our grave to bring back a level eight, of which we can then synchro summon into any of our synchros. And that's just a basic generic play that you could do if you open a bunch of monsters to do. And this still yep. gets you all your setup and for your opponent's turn. On your opponent's turn, when your opponent special summons, you'll be able to search one and you'll be able to substitute with any of these. And this will still be accruing counters as you're doing so. Nice. Yes. So this now, is just a very basic combo. This is a very basic combo. I think for uh, a better sake of showcasing what you could deck and do, I'm going to do a test hand instead. Okay, let's do it. All right, so let's do a test hand here. The hand we're going to open is uh, Fenrir, Bright Knight. Foolish Bailer Goods, uh, Departure, and a Veiler. This is a very solid hand. This is this is an insanely solid hand, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, this looks really good. So you're going to start, you're going to special summon out the Fenrir and use Fenrir's effect to search for the other Fenrir. This kind of gives you a bit of insulation against monster effects as well, but we're not going to need it for that. We're then going to activate the effect of the uh, Departure, sending the Fenrir to search for any two of Yep. We're going to grab two level eights here, because we realistically only need two level eights right here. Uh, we're going to, to tribute one of the level eights, special on the field. And then, since we now control our Sartic, we can now special on the Bright Knight and search for an Sartic spell or trap, of which we'll grab the Septetrion. And now this is where things get interesting. From there, we're going to then activate the Foolish Barrel Goods, send the Ice Barrier to the grave, and now we have all the setup we need. Now we're going to first send this level 7 and the level 8 together to now make a Polari, of which Polari will then allow me to activate the field spell. Likewise, this will trigger and draw me an additional card. Wow. Wow. So after all that, you still have two hand traps. Yeah. From there, I'll then banish the Ice Barrier, send any essentially or starting from my deck to the grave, uh, I guess this one, and then add it back to my hand. We'll then go about by banishing any or starting from our grave, special summon out the uh, and our, the Arsartic from our hand. So once again, trigger the effect of this to draw another card. We're just gonna do it. This is turn. crazy. Well, this is not amazing, but... Actually, sorry, we're gonna bring it back from the grave instead, so we're not gonna do the draw just yet. Okay, okay. But, we'll then synchro summon with these two to make Polar Star, and that allows us to draw next turn the hand. Okay. And then from there, we can activate the Polar Star effect to tribute it and itself. And summon out Septetron and draw another card. That is shockingly relevant, I think. Yeah, because you can use this on your opponent's turn, right? I could use this on my opponent's turn, and this allows me to bring back any disruption. But realistically, it also means that I could potentially bring back another level 8 right now. And then synchro with these two. To make a Grand Chariot and draw another card. So now, through that entire combo, you still have four cards in hand, two of which are hand traps. Your opponent's locked out of all their extract monster effects. This has now accrued, I believe, starting from this, 
has now accrued six counters. Yep. So at any point you're supposed to special a monster, you can snatch steal it. Let's not forget that this will search a monster on your opponent's turn, which if you special them will then trigger you to draw another card. They can't target any of your uh, or start cards, which is everything on the field. This is insane. And this is sometimes just generally off of the cards that you can... And this is not counting the fact that if we were drawing our Sartix, we could have found a way to actually not use the effect of Big Dipper so that we can use the effect of our Polar Star twice. Twice. Yeah, the Polar Star effect comes up every once in a while, but in most cases, this is the board you're trying to end up with. Yeah, I mean, you can argue, like, having all the hand traps is really relevant as well, right? So, yeah, oh, that's absolutely. crazy. All right, well, Tony, thank you for the deck profile. I appreciate it. The combos uh, look really nice. I feel like this deck actually got a decent amount of support with Dune. Um, so yeah, thank you for the deck profile, thank you for the combos. Do you have anything we have to say before we uh, head out? No, nope, thank you for having me again. Of course, it's always a pleasure having you, man. So with that, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. And Spanko, Tony, signing out. Peace. <laughs>